In the modern era of the Star Wars universe, Boba Fett was considered the best bounty hunter in the business. Before him, Cad Bane held the title, which he took from Jango Fett. The bounty hunter we'll be talking about today was also considered the greatest of his time, but he lived and died long before Cad Bane or the Fetts. He reigned supreme during the Jedi Civil War, killing without hesitation or remorse. He certainly had more kills than any other bounty hunter in his time, and he may well have had the all-time highest kill count of any bounty hunter. His name was Kalo Nord, and in this video, we'll be telling his story. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Kalo Nord, a human male, was sold into slavery at a very young age and spent most of his childhood badly mistreated. The torment Nord received as a child led him to adopt an attitude of ruthlessness and cold-heartedness, virtually becoming a sociopath in the process. At the age of 16, Kello brutally murdered his masters and escaped slavery. He used his newfound freedom to track down and murder his parents as well, causing a bounty to be placed on his head. Kello never looked all that formidable, since he was extremely short, standing at just a meter and a half in height, probably due to childhood malnourishment. But even at a young age, his looks belied his cunning and skill. As bounty hunters came after him, he took note of their methods, acquiring skills that he would later put to work as a hunter himself. He killed each and every one of the bounty hunters that tracked him down, stealing supplies and equipment from each one. Eventually, the bounty hunters guild determined that the bounty on him was just too dangerous and called it off. But Kalo Nord wasn't finished. He tracked down the people who had placed the bounty in the first place and killed them all, then set out to become a bounty hunter himself. Like most bounty hunters, he sold his services to the highest bidder, but he worked mostly for the thrill of the hunt and had a preference for contracts that allowed him to kill. He quickly rose to be considered one of the best in the business, a reputation he earned for his frighteningly high kill count. Like most bounty hunters, Kalo Nord used a diverse array of equipment during his hunts. His usual outfit was a bit gaudy and seemingly not all that practical, prominently featuring a set of night vision goggles, a verpine made personal energy shield, and a heavy leather padded blue jacket, which looked almost comically large on him. This jacket allowed him to conceal a good many weapons, however, with his usual arsenal, including a pair of Mandalorian heavy blasters, a vibroblade, a few stun grenades, and a pair of thermal detonators. Nord also owned a suit of heavy armor based on Mandalorian designs a custom-made set designed by one of the galaxy's best armorers. The designer was murdered by Kalo Nord shortly after the suit's completion, a measure taken to ensure it remained unique. Nord's small stature and odd-looking outfit meant that many beings made the foolish mistake of not taking him seriously. This mistake was often fatal, as Kalo had no qualms with murdering people just for trying to talk to him. He was known to give others to the count of three to leave him alone before he opened fire. This habit, combined with Nord's lethality in his line of work, meant that his kill count was one of the highest of any bounty hunter, if not the all-time highest. Mission Vow once remarked that he'd kill more people than the Iridian Plague. Despite his tendency to commit murder, Kello Nord fulfilled a number of contracts for the Galactic Republic and the local governments of several core worlds in his day. He preferred, however, to work with members of the criminal underworld as they tended to be much more lenient about him killing his targets. In particular, during the Jedi Civil War, he worked a lot with Davik Kang, a crime lord based on Tyrus who was a leading member of the Exchange. During the old Sith Wars, the Exchange was one of the most powerful crime syndicates in the galaxy, second only to the Hutt Cartel. Though in later years it was overshadowed and effectively replaced by the Black Sun, the exchange became incredibly powerful during the Mandalorian Wars and wielded considerable influence during the darkest chapters of the old Sith Wars. It dealt in smuggling, the arms trade, the slave trade, the spice trade, and good old fashioned extortion, and during the Jedi Civil War, Davik Kang was also one of its kingpins. Kalo Nord found favor with the exchange in his work for Davik, allowing him to become more selective with his bounty hunting. Most of Kello's work for Davik was regular bounty hunting fare, but now and again, the crime lord gave him more unusual jobs. He was known to have tracked down and killed a fully grown Rancor for Davik, who wanted a Rancor head for his trophy wall, a task that Kello eagerly accepted as he had a bit of a passion for big game hunting. 
Nord was also taken on by Davik as a bodyguard at times, a boring but highly profitable task. He was on Tyrus as Davik's bodyguard when, in 3956 BBY, the Sith seized control of the planet and put it under quarantine, preventing anyone from leaving. While quarantined on Tyrus, Kello spent his time tracking down small-time bounties and committing a few murders here and there. He spied a lot with fellow mercenary Candorus Ordo, a Mandalorian who Davik also hired. Shortly before the end of the Sith quarantine, Candorus brought the amnesiac Revan into Davik's estate in order to steal his ship, the Ebon Hawk, and flee Tyrus. Davik and Kallo caught the two and their companions in the act, but were ultimately unable to stop them from escaping. The Sith began shelling the planet during the flight in Davik's hangar, killing Davik and incapacitating Kallo. Revan and his companions presumed Kallo to be dead and fled as Tyrus burned. But Kallo Nord survived the destruction of Tyrus. How exactly he escaped the planet is unknown, but he was able to get a good glimpse of Revan and his companions before they escaped in the Ebon Hawk. He recognized one as Bastila Shan, the Jedi the Sith were searching for, and another as Karth Onassi, a legendary Republic war hero. Sensing that the Sith would be interested in this information, he reached out to Admiral Saul Karath of the Sith Empire and arranged a meeting with Darth Malak. Through Kallo, Malak learned of Bastila's escape from Tyrus and that Revan had been with her. Malak was impressed by Nord's survival on Tyrus and hired him to track down Bastila and Revan. The bounty hunter readily agreed, wanting to protect his reputation and avenge his earlier defeat. After a long hunt, Kallo Nord tracked Revan and his companions to the Dune Sea on Tatooine where they were searching for an ancient star map. On Tatooine, Nord hired a group of mercenaries to accompany him out into the desert and then tracked the Jedi to a remote crate dragon lair where the star map was hidden. They set up an ambush outside of the cave, blocking the way back into the desert with their speeders and waiting for the Jedi to emerge. When they did, Revan initially tried to bargain with Kallo, but the bounty hunter was unresponsive. He wanted the Jedi dead to protect his reputation and didn't care about the money. A battle broke out, but it didn't end well for Kallo. The Jedi and their companions easily dispatched his hired goons, and though he put up quite a fight, Kallo Nord eventually fell to Revan's blade. After many long years, one of the galaxy's most prolific killers was defeated, though it took one of the Jedi Order's greatest to finally bring him down. Despite Kallo Nord's fearsome reputation during his lifetime, history largely forgot him. The Dark Wars, the era that followed the Jedi Civil War, saw many similarly vicious bounty hunters rise to prominence, and as the exchange rebounded from the loss of Davik, it began to favor them as much as it had favored Kallo. Nord's own story was ultimately swept up into that of Revan, becoming a footnote in the legend of the Jedi Order's Prodigal Knight. But what do you think? Are there other old bounty hunters that you'd like us to talk about? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.